It's not cultivating kindness, because that would take more than a week. And it's not cultivating judgment, because that would take more than a week. We're simply reintroducing it in, in its clean and pure form. So now we're counting the Omer, and we are headed for Shavuos, the anniversary of the giving of the Torah. And the anniversary means a reliving, a re-experiencing, a repeat of all that happened the first time at Mount Sinai. God came down to the mountain. And every year on Shavuos, God comes down some more so that he becomes more knowable, more reachable, more visible, less deniable. 3,327, correct me if I'm wrong, that's 3,327 steps down, closer to the world. And we're counting the days. The counting of the Omer, uh, in the spiritual sense, is that on Pesach, when we eat the matzah, we're basically dismissing all of our ego self-importance, self-significance, we nullify ourselves of all traces of ego. And when you do that, you really can't say anything, you can't feel anything, you can't have an opinion or a position on anything because you're nothing. That's the first night of Pesach. We start counting the Omer on the second night. Because after having experienced a total, um, a total cleansing of all ego, now we can start replacing our emotions, our character, one step at a time, but this time without ego. So, for example, the first week, we are focused on the emotion of kindness, chesed. Kindness can be egotistical. It's not the most egotistical because kindness does suggest some humility, but it can contain some ego ingredients, like, like a food product that has a chametz ingredient. But now that we've gotten rid of all of our hummets, we can trust ourselves to experience kindness and express kindness, knowing that it will not contain hummets because we got rid of the hummets. We burnt it, we sold it, we, we, uh, we, we disowned it. We certainly are not eating it. We don't even use the word hummets all Pesach. The second week, which we're in today, is the week of discipline. Discipline, perfection, judgment. That is more likely to have some chametz, some ego. But now that we've gotten rid of all ego, and we've reinstalled the kindness without ego, now we can re-experience and allow ourselves to experience some judgment, trusting that it will not be affected by ego. It will be true justice, true judgment. The third week will be compassion and so on. So what we're really doing is not uh, it's not cultivating kindness because that would take more than a week. And it's not cultivating judgment, because that would take more than a week. Uh, 
we're simply reintroducing it in in its clean and pure form. So it's like, you know, cleaning up for Pesach. You take out all the shelves, you take out all the thing, you clean it all, and then you put the shelves back in. Then you put the things back in. But now it's without hummus. Now it's Pesach. So that's what the counting of the Omer is. It's a, it's a sobering time. We don't make weddings, except on Lagba Omer. It's a sober time because we are cautiously re-entering the uh, world of ego without our ego. We're entering a world of self without the selfish. So we're careful. We are thoughtful and mindful. By the time we reach Shavuos and we have reinstalled all seven emotions, all seven qualities, and they are egoless, now we can receive the Torah like a mensch. Hear what God is saying without distorting, without hearing what we want to hear, but really hear Him. And that makes Shavuos an incredible experience. In fact, the sacrifice that were brought in the times of the temple on Shavuos had to be made of chametz. Because now that we are chametz free, we have no fear of the chametz of the world. We can turn it into a mitzvah. We can turn it into a holiday sacrifice. So may we all merit that this year Shavuos should be a Mashiach Deke Shavuos, the ultimate Shavuos, the conclusion of all that began on the original Shavuos. And we should have a world that is godly, a world that is pleasing to him, a world in which he can feel completely comfortable and welcome, a world that he can call his home. And of course, if you're living alone, it's not a home. So a home means a home that he can share with us. On that day, God will be one, the Jews will be one, the Torah will be one, the land will be one, because all unholiness will have been consumed. Thanks again. It's always a pleasure. Spread the word. Keep doing good. Because soon it will be done. And a whole new way of serving will begin. But this opportunity, we got we to gotta cash in. We got to take advantage while we are still capable of making a difference in preparing the world for Mashiach. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. I want to invite you to join us as VIPs, partners in our work, and join us also for uh, a personal chat with other members of the VIP club. We talk about many things. There's an opportunity to ask, to respond, to make a comment, to meet the other supporters. And together we can really make a difference in Jewish life and in life in general. So join us. It's good to know dot org. Log in, call, make contact, and join us with the VIPs.